Hey everyone, as we continue to explore the continent Oceania, today we are going to be learning about the country Papua New Guinea. Hi, I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Miss Carly, the teacher. It's time for Home Time with Robbie and Susie. I have hands. I have hands. Watch me clap. Watch me clap. Oh. Watch me swing. Watch me swing. Oh, what a miracle am I? I have legs. I have legs. They can bend and stretch. They can bend and stretch. Oh, what a miracle am I? Oh, what a miracle. Oh, So very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have a spine, I have a spine, it can twist and bend, it can twist and bend. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have a one foot, I have a one foot, watch me balance. about Papua New Guinea today, Papua New Guinea is a very large island at the top of Australia. There are some amazing wildlife in Papua New Guinea and one thing as a tradition in Papua New Guinea, the people go and search for a snake and there are lots of different snakes in Papua New Guinea. There are long, big, thick ones and colourful ones and even really tiny ones and we might learn more about them today. But first, I have a song about a snake, and it's called A Silly Slippery Snake. That has lots of s, -s, -s sounds, so we can practice together. Okay, there's some actions, so we're going to put our hands together to create a snake, and it's going to be silly and slippery. Okay, are you ready to learn with me? It goes like this. Oh, I wish I was a silly slippery snake. Oh, I wish I was a silly, slippery snake. Oh, I'd slither across the floor and I'd slip under the door. Oh, I wish I was a silly, slippery snake. Did you like that song? Would you like to try it with me? Okay, get your hands together and we're going to make a silly, slippery snake. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, I wish I was a silly, slippery snake. Oh, I wish I was a silly, slippery snake. Oh, I'd slither across the floor and I'd slip under the door. Oh, I wish I was a silly, slippery snake. Did you like that song? I loved it and thank you for singing with me. Okay, let's go and see what we're going to learn about next. <laughs> I love that song about the slippery, slippery snake. Did you enjoy it? I have a book about a snake and about Papua New Guinea. I hope you've been enjoying learning about it. I've got some more exciting things to learn. Would you like to come see? This book is called The Lost Tale. 
we see this boy here. He has a tail in his hand and it's connected to a snake. Does this snake look real? Let's find out. The lost tail. Hurry up, Nari. We're leaving, Alfred yelled, banging on the door of Nari's hut. Nari jumped up. Come on, no time for sleeping in today, Alfred shouted again. Nari stuffed a handful of taro and sweet potato into his mouth and ran outside. What else has he got? Looks like a bow and arrow. And can you see the sweet potato he's eating? Looks yum. The Bundy boys were lining up, ready to carry the snake to the dance festival. Alfred, the tallest, carried the snake's head. Nari, the smallest, carried its tail. The other boys carried its long belly. Nari, did you forget we have five day walk to Goriku? Alfred scolded. Nari had not forgotten. He picked up his bow and arrow and shook them to show how excited he was. Five day walk, let's go see. Through Papua New Guinea, I wonder what we might see on this journey. Nari's mother had told him all about the journey to Gorica. By day, you will walk through jungle, climb high mountains and slide into steep valleys. You must watch out for angry cassowary and wild pigs. Can you see the pigs hiding? There's some cassowary babies. Look, a green tree frog, a bird of paradise, a butterfly and this big long snake. I wonder what they'll see on their journey. You will splash through fast flowing rivers and cross over bridges that swing high in the air. But Nari, do not be afraid. Bundi warriors are never afraid. Spiders and butterflies, even a hornbill. At night, you will sleep in the mountain forests with their snake and all their friends sleeping. When the Bundy boys arrived in Gorica, Nari saw that his mother was right. The Gorica football oval was filled with painted faces and dancers in traditional costume. Can you see them all? Nari had never seen so many people. The hundreds of tribal languages rang in his ear and the brightest of colors of the feathered costumes looked like dancing rainbows. How beautiful. So many different people dressed in lots of different costumes from their tribe or their land. Everyone here thinks they will win the dance prize, said Alfred, but we're gonna win it with our snake dance. The booty boys cheered and followed Alfred to a row of grass huts. Each dance group was given a hut to sleep in. The Buddy boys were so exhausted that they curled up on the floor and went straight to sleep. Nari slept holding the snake's tail and dreamed about winning the dance prize. When Nari woke up the next morning, the hut was empty. No Alfred, no boys, no snake. Nari ran outside into the crowd of colours and noise. The first person he saw was a man with a straw through his nose. Excuse me, have you seen some boys like me carrying a long black snake? Nari asked the man. The man shook his head. Uh oh. He's got these beautiful, oh look, he's got a drum. I wonder if he's going to use that in his dance. Nari pushed through the crowd looking for Alfred. He bumped into a group of women 
wearing moss wigs. Please, have you seen the Bundy Boys dance group? The woman shook their heads. Oh no. Nari saw a group of ghost dance nearby. Excuse me, have you seen any boys carrying a long black snake made of straw and cloth? The ghost dancers shook their head. I wonder where they could be. Nari was pushing through the crowd when he saw the snake's tail. <gasps> he ran after it, dodging between the drummers wearing blue striped skirts. But the tail moved very fast. It flicked in and out between the chicken dancers. I wonder how he's feeling right now. I wonder if he's feeling a bit scared. I know I would be if I didn't know where my friends were. The tail disappeared among a group of warriors with bows and arrows. Nari stared at the place where he'd seen it last. But the tail was gone. Nari still looking for the tail when he heard the sound of drums and cheering. The get dance competition was starting. Sitting on a bench beside Nari were two of the dance festival beauty queens. Look at them. I don't suppose you have seen any boys carrying a long black snake, he asked them. The beauty queens shook their feathered headdresses and their earrings dangled. Nari was worried. Oh no, he's looking very sad and afraid. He knew that he must find his group a snake needed its tail carrier. Not only that, but he had never been alone before. He began to cry, but then he quickly blinked the tears away. Bundy worries are never afraid. Then Nari saw the man with the straw through his nose again. The man called out to him, I saw the Bunda boys in the middle of the football oval. Thank you, thank you, Nari shouted, running off. Nari ran to the middle of the oval. He was pushing past the mud men when he saw the snake's tail. Again, with a yell, he threw himself on top of it. Didn't want to let go of that snake's tail. There you are, Nari, shouted Alfred. We've been looking for you everywhere. The judges won't let us dance without you. Of course not, said Nari. I'm very important. I carry the snake's tail. Look how happy Nari is now, being back with all the other boys. The body boys dance past the judges, carrying the snake over their heads. Alfred whispered back to them, see their faces, they like us. I'm sure we will win a prize. And they did. Oh, how happy he would be for winning together as a team and finding each other. It's a beautiful story. Thank you for reading it with me. I really liked seeing all of the different dancers in all of their different headdresses. Some painted themselves from head to toe. And some of the women wore just a headdress and some jewelry. Some of the warriors had bows and arrows and some of the men had drums beating so they could dance. All of them reflected where they were from. These men have birds of paradise that live near their village that have blue feathers or brown and white feathers. These women, even though they have moss on their head, they also have beautiful birds of paradise feathers there too. And they've made some jewelry out of some leaves. You find what's in nature around them and they decorate. These birds of paradise have blue and white feathers 
And so they've made blue and white skirts to match and big breastplates. And they've even put leaves on their arms. And these chicken dancers, they've covered themselves in leaves. And they've got a big tall hat. And look, another Birds of Paradise feather on top. So amazing. Look at these beautiful breastplates. And here's some bow and arrows here. They can catch some of the animals. And look, it's a beautiful big bone it's from a bird as well. Or maybe that's from the wild boars that we saw earlier. Painted their faces. And the queens with their beautiful headdresses. They have so many different feathers from so many different types of birds of paradise. Standing up nice and tall, look, there's the blue and white one and the brown and white one. And then they've painted their faces to match their headdress. And then look at all these jewels that they've made out of shells and nuts. They look beautiful, don't they? There's even some nuts here that's connected to the headdress to make it look like beautiful dangly earrings and some feathery earrings here. What beautiful headdresses. I wonder if we could go and make some of these things. We might even make a slippery slippery snake. Should we go see? <laughs> I really love that story about Nari and the snake dance and how he met all the tribes in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I loved all those beautiful feathers that came out of all their headdresses. They were so colourful mm. and there must be so many different types of birds in Papua New Guinea to create those amazing headdresses. Absolutely. And not just birds, but there was nuts and seeds and mm. leaves and all sorts of things. Mm. Well, my favorite part was actually the really big long snake that they made for the dance. Yeah, so what are you going to make? I'm going to make that snake. Awesome. And you have some materials here too. So what are you going to create today? Well, I did like the headdresses, so I'm going to try and make a headdress out of things that I can find. Obviously, they're not from Papua New Guinea, so I'm just going to give it a go. Well, I have some materials as well, such as some paint, some textures, some scissors, and I'm going to create my very own snake. Great. Okay, so I'm going to start by cutting out my snake. So I have a paper plate, and I don't know how it's going to make a snake, but I'm going to try. So a snake's tail, the part that Nari hung onto, was very thin and small. And that's the part that he saw in this story. So I'm going to start on the outside like this and start with a thin snake tail. And all those boys held the big belly of the snake, which was a lot thicker. So I'm going to gradually start to cut thicker and thicker as I go towards the middle, just like this. Well, I found a kookaburra feather and a crow feather, but that's all I could find. So I am got, I have folded my paper into a couple of pieces. Now I'm cutting the feather out here, and then I'm going to give it some feathery look by putting some snip, 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 snips to make it look like a feather. Wow, that's a beautiful, I love the colors mm. in this feather too, the brown and the white, and it's all flecked with the colors. Well, I'm starting, as I'm cutting, my snake seems to be coming down like this and the long, long tail. And I'm almost, I just need to make a head now. So I'll, I think I'll finish just like that. And then I have my tail, my body, and the head of my snake, which I'm just going to Looking shape good. up a little bit. A spirally like, snake. A spirally snake. I love those s s s sounds as well. Well, the snake in the story is black, so I'm going to paint my snake black, just like the snake in the story. And it looks like the boys made the head out of wood. We actually found um, the, a picture from the dance over here in the corner, and you can see where the boys made the snake out of cloth, like Nari said, and then painted it black. They even paint themselves black. Mm. And they put some nice shapes on top, which I think you're going to do soon. And then the head is made out of wood. 
pretty cool. Yes. And even one of the pictures we saw, then they made the tongue with a big long leaf. <laughs> they are very creative. Mm. And the snake and the dancers, as you can see, are black here. But as you can see here in the picture, you can see another person from another tribe who is extremely colorful. <laughs> yes. His face is yellow and he's got a beautiful big headdress on. Yeah. And as you can see, his headdress is all brown and fluffy. And those are actually feathers from the mm. bird of paradise, which is this one here. So there's lots of different birds of paradise, isn't there, Lauren? They but are. That's the one that that man has here. In fact, he has some of them here. This is a rainbow lorikeet. Have you got a rainbow lorikeet at your house? Well, there are some in Papua New Guinea as well. And you can see how they've got the green, yellow, red, and um, feathers there, where they've fanned them out to put them on the front and the sides. There's some other birds of paradise as well there but it's pretty cool. It is. I just am so, ad I admire their creativeness. Mm. Finding the things around them. I wonder what things you could find in your backyard. Do you have leaves in your backyard? Or can you go for a walk to the beach to be able to find things? Or I wonder what you could do at Little Mirror. I know there's some preschools that are very close to some tall autumn leaves that you mm. could find right now that could you could um, decorate with or um, maybe there might be some palm leaves near you or some palm nuts or some gum nuts I know there's some gum mm. nuts in some of your backyards already falling from the big gum trees that shade your backyard and some of those leaves as well as you can see this mm. person from this tribe is wearing leaves around his body as well as decoration so on his arms That's right. and on his body and probably his legs as well and even on his headdress you can see the leaves all here and then the feathers come again he's got the feathers from this bird of paradise and then they look like cockatoo feathers but it looks like they've cut the feather to make different shapes pretty cool mm. I loved about Nari's journey about when he had to go through the jungle for yes. five days to get to the festival and how he would have seen so many animals yeah. and other types of birds including the cassowary. That's right. Which is you can find in Australia as well but the cassowary is a very very large bird. That's right because Papua New Guinea is part of Oceania, mm. our last continent that we're talking about and oh I cut my, leaf, my feather too much. Um, the cassowary in fact was part of the land bridge. It mm. could walk from the top of Queensland across to Papua New Guinea, but now there's ocean in between and the Torres Strait Islands are there, which are part of Australia, our country. And then the next country is Papua New Guinea. So some of the animals and birds, like we talked about, rainbow lorikeet will mm. be all the way down in New South Wales and lives all the way up to Queensland and then also in Papua New Guinea. Wow, it's amazing. I love how close they are and how we share some of the animals. I did it again. Look at that. We'll have to go with, Maybe we could be like that one over there where they cut their feather and they cut big chunks out to make um, different patterns. I think we'd have to go with that because I accidentally cut it. Well, I'm slowly painting my snake. It's a little bit hard and to stay in the line so it doesn't go on the table. But as you can see, my snake is turning black and I've got a little bit more to go. And I'm definitely concentrating, making sure that I stay on the paper but it's a lot of fun as well. So I try to make patterns in my feather, but it's definitely much easier with a real feather because you just cut some of the pieces. You open it up and then cut this way. With my paper feather, I didn't do a very good job, so I don't think we're gonna be able to use that. But here I go, I need to make a headdress. This is a bit too much of a mask, so I'm just going to cut um, my paper plate to here and then go around Follow the round part of my paper plate to make it like a rainbow shape so it can sit on top of my head. And then cut the other side off. I'm just using the top rainbow and now I can decorate. Wow, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Lauren. Well, I have finished painting my black snake. Great. As you can see, it's all completed there. It's wet. But as you can see here in the picture, I remember in the story, there are some dots on the snake that they've decorated the snake that they dance with and those are red and white and so I have some white sand and so you can find um, you can use sand from your 
the beach or sand from your sand pit at home or sand at preschool. And so I'm trying to use some different types of materials to somehow create these dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pinch, just like this, a little pinch, and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit in a, in a circle on the snake. And try and, try and make it a small little circle. It's very tricky. Using my fingers to squeeze them together to try and keep the sand falling in the same spot. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. So if you look at any of their headdresses, it's like a butterfly where it's symmetrical. Whatever pattern is on the left side is on the right side. So I have to keep trying to keep it symmetrical. So I've got two brown feathers and then I only have one of each of these. So I've put them in the middle. My feathers aren't quite strong. They need to be cardboard. And then I'm going to get some of these paddy camp hands. I'm gonna cut them up as well to put on the other sides. Wow. I love how colourful your headdress is, Anna. Mm, in Papua New Guinea, they have even more colours. I'm just going to try my best with what I have. Make them more feathery. Okay, so I've made some dots of this white sand on my snake, as you can see there. Oh, and okay. now I'm going to do some, I got a red text and I'm going to create some red dots as well. Just like that. Perfect. Now to keep this symmetrical, I have half a patty pan on one side and half on the other side. I'm going to add some more. You can create your own headdress and snake at home if you like with the materials that you find at home or in the garden or on a walk at the beach. See if you can find your own feathers as well. That's a lot of fun. Mm. I like collecting feathers and all sorts of interesting leaves and shells and shapes if I go on a walk. I have to find them at the beach mm. of ocean, um, ocean birds that have been swimming along and they've dropped some feathers into the ocean and then they swim, they float all the way up to the ocean, to the sandy beach where we can collect them along with some shells. I've got some cool green dots that I'm going to also decorate with because I don't have any leaves today. I need to keep it symmetrical, so two on one side, one, two on the other side, keeping it the same on both sides of this line. Hmm. Almost finished my snake. I think I could dance in the festival with this. Oh. That's beautiful. Mm. Be I love that all the tribes come together for that festival and they That's can right. all see each other and cheer each other on and admire and share yeah. how different they are. That's right. And lots of them travelled from lots of different places, some five days, some two days, some ten days to get there. Wow. Mm. Right That's through amazing. the jungle. Let's see your snake. Okay. Oh, I think you need some friends to dance with that snake. Oh, there we go. So my long, snake you up. need to hold it together. I know, I have to use two hands to hold my tail up. And they held it underneath them and danced. <laughs> <laughs> I loved exploring Papua New Guinea with you today, Lauren. Me too. It was fun, especially because it's such a close country to us. It was fun to explore how they're similar mm. and different to us. I love that as well. Well, we look forward to seeing what you can create at home when you go out on exploring and finding some interesting things. That's right. So we look forward to seeing them and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye. See ya.